Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in. However, you may be doing so in the many places that we are both on air, online, live streaming, and with full video over on our various social media outlets these days, including the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook, El Paso History TV on YouTube, and other similar pages also on Twitter and Twitch.tv, either under those or Andrew J. Polk. Uh, today is is Saturday, April 1st, and no fooling, we are talking about a lot of things and big changes that are coming for some very important preservation and historic organizations in town, including those associated with Henry Trost, as well as some statewide ones, including Preservation Texas, breaking all of that down here. So, of course, this is the place where we say Texas history begins in El Paso. We do have a history moment for you at the start of Hour 2 of the show from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk talking this week about survivors of the Titanic and their presence an impact here in El Paso. But joining us here in studio today, we do have former state senator Jose Rodriguez, as well as uh, uh, Professor Max Grossman of uh, UTEP. As also on the phone, we do have uh, Evan Thompson, a director, and all of you associated with Preservation Texas now. So thank you all very much for joining us here today. Thank you for having Thanks. us. And Evan, thank you very much for joining us on the phone. Thank you. So part of what we're talking about today is the changes that have been seen and that are going on when it comes to a lot of these subjects. And the Preservation Texas sounds like a yeah, decently descriptive phrase, the idea of preserving things and history. But it's more than that as well because, among other things, there are uh, big new movements and, well, options and actions happening in and around town. So Evan, since we got you for a bit of time here at the start of the program, uh, for those unfamiliar, can you describe what Preservation Texas is and then specifically what's going to be going on in this region? Well, Preservation Texas uh, is a statewide nonprofit organization that is dedicated to educating about and advocating for historic preservation. We were founded in 1985. Uh, we have a a small staff, but a, a board of directors uh, that serve as volunteers, um, including uh, Max and Jose from West Texas. Uh, as part of our program, we provide a voice for historic preservation in the state legislature. That's something that's happening right now. Um, we organize regional events. We're, we're planning four regional events around the state later this year, educational outreach programs. We own and steward a 2,400-acre uh, farm and ranch near Waco, Texas, that is hmm. uh, in the process of becoming what will be a statewide preservation training center. And uh, we're also in the process right now of, of overseeing the distribution of, of nearly a million dollars in grants to restore rural African-American historic places, uh, principally in East Texas. Um, so we are a, we're considered a full-service uh, preservation organization. For many years, we've been the nonprofit statewide partner of the National Trust for Historic Preservation. And our members include everything from local activists, enthusiasts for preservation, city and county governments, and other preservation nonprofits uh, around Texas. Okay, so a lot of work around the state here, but then uh, some of the announcements that are specifically happening in West Texas is, uh, to put it at least mildly, there's uh, some new offices that are going to be established and you're all working on for this region specifically, right? That's right. So the, the major evolution in how we have operated as an organization is to step out of Austin and get out into other parts of the state because historic preservation is principally a local activity. You have to be able to be uh, responsive to needs on the ground, meet with people where they are, site visits at historic properties, participating in public meetings. It's almost impossible to do when you're in Austin. And so last year, we, uh, our board adopted a plan that we have begun to implement to open regional offices. So our first regional office opened in uh, San Marcos in Central Texas uh, last fall. In January, we opened a Northeast Texas regional office that is based in Tyler. And 
We have just now, thanks to the leadership that Max and Jose and others have provided uh, through the support of, of the El Paso County and private donors such as J.P. Bryant, we're going to be able to open and staff a West Texas regional office based in El Paso later this year. So that's exciting news on its own, but there's even more moves that are coming along with this. So, um, Max, you and former State Senator Jose Rodriguez, board members of a Preservation Texas, but uh, you've also been and been on this program previously in a variety of different capacities, but I feel like uh, most easily associated for me when it comes to uh, the Trost Society, Henry Trost, preservation of those kind of buildings. And so that's an aspect of what's also going to be happening here. There are some changes coming for that as well, right? Yes, the Trost Society is a local 501c3 nonprofit established just about exactly 10 years ago. Hmm. and uh, it has quite a following. We've got over 10,000 followers on Facebook and other hmm. social media platforms. We've, we've held architectural tours, training sessions for property owners, uh, historic preservation summits, and so on and so forth. Uh, we have voted to dissolve. Uh, we've hmm. voted hmm. to dissolve and turn over all of our assets, including our intellectual property, to Preservation Texas, because Preservation Texas is going to step in and subsume our mission and expand it, and they're going to be able to do things that we can only dream about. Uh, it's a much uh, stronger, uh, uh, more powerful organization with, with more assets, um, more reach, and they're going to be able to do things that uh, we had always hoped to do. And so it made sense for us to dissolve and let uh, Preservation Texas step in. So, of course, there's been some other actions against surrounding this even, including some uh, monies that were voted on uh, earlier, well, late, early last month, actually, as we are now airing this, when it came to providing uh, funds for the establishment of these offices that we are talking about here. So when it comes to essentially what will be changing, of course, names and transferring of rights, like you mentioned, but when it comes to the mission, uh, from your perspective, Max, what is going to be I mean, you mentioned some exciting things coming. We can delve further into that. But when it comes to the focus on the things, and particularly that of, you know, the works of a noted architect uh, working in the area of uh, Henry Trost and, you know, Trost and Trost, what are some of the things that you feel are going to be changing or continuing on with those even? Well, Preservation Texas, like the Trost Society, will embrace and promote our entire architectural tradition Mm -hmm. from the Native Americans through Trost and Trost, Mabel Welch, uh, Kinesel, Gibson and Robertson, and all the other great firms that have operated here right through uh, the present day. And they're going to do a lot of what we've always done in the local nonprofit, hold tours, uh, liaise with city and county governments to uh, promote preservationist policies. Uh, There are other ideas on the table that Preservation Texas is bringing, like establishing an architectural guide Hmm. for the region, uh, which is sorely needed. That will require quite a bit of research uh, to assist in efforts to preserve adobe buildings, uh, another effort Hmm. that is sorely needed here. All kinds of ideas, uh, but this is an organization uh, that will report uh, to the board uh, headquartered in San Marcos. Uh, As Evan Thompson, our executive director, just stated, it'll be the third regional uh, field office. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're planning others, but we're, we're very, very excited about this one. Uh, Preservation Texas established in El Paso will cover nine counties. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so not just El Paso, but also Hudspeth, Presidio, neighboring counties, Brewster, uh, where there's a lot of historic architecture, tradition, and culture that needs to be considered as well. But we want to be the go-to place for, for historic preservation. We want people who want to learn about historic preservation to come to us including property owners, members of the public, activist groups, other nonprofits, and so on. And uh, we think we can play a really, really important role. To your question, uh, El Paso County generous, generously provided us with $300,000 mm-hmm. of funding, $100,000 a year for three years, which comes from the hotel occupancy tax, okay. mm-hmm. the hot tax, right? And under Texas law, the hot tax can be allocated for efforts that promote uh, heritage tourism Mm -hmm. uh, that are in line with the mission of our county, which is very big in heritage tourism. Uh, Currently, El Paso only attracts about 2.1% of tourist dollars in the state of Texas, even though we have Ah, such an incredible history and culture and architecture. And our aim is to capture a much larger slice of that that potential. And our built environment uh, is fundamentally important in order to accomplish that, right? We need to restore and preserve our cultural assets in order to attract tourists here. Preservation Texas understands that, 
and will play a leading role in preservationist policies. And, of course, uh, also in studio with us here, I haven't addressed you directly yet, uh, former State mm-hmm. Senator Jose Rodriguez. Of course, this area we're talking about for this regional office, and you are, of course, a board member for Preservation Texas as well. The region that we're talking about for this regional office, the nine counties, is a significant portion, if not entirely, covering your former district as well, right? Well, that's correct. Uh, it covers, uh, as uh, Max said, down to Presidio County, mm-hmm. Husband, Culberson, and El Paso County were the district. But now uh, the nine counties extend out to Brewster, which is over by Marathon, Mm -hmm. um, down to Reeves County, uh, Pecos, and um, other Terrell County, as a matter of fact, Terrell County. So it is a wide expanse of of, uh, geographic jurisdiction Mm -hmm. that we're talking about here. And uh, I just want to add that that Preservation Texas can be, in my opinion, a catalyst for people in our region, and especially here in El Paso, developing a greater appreciation for the historical assets, the heritage, the history that we have in our area, and what that means for our community and for the state of Texas. Uh, as Max pointed out, we have, you know, uh, probably the, mo- the most diverse uh, selection, I'm going to use the word selection, of historical sure. assets, whether it be buildings, whether it be cemeteries like Concordia, whether it be the history of the region on both sides of the border. I mean, we're a binational, bicultural community, and we share a lot of history with our sister city of Juarez and on down all the way down to Ojinaga, where I used to mm-hmm. go to when I was representing Presidio. And, and it's an opportunity, really, for us to, as an organization, have uh, people develop a deeper appreciation for historic preservation and what that means for for us as peoples uh, from a borderlands community like El Paso mm-hmm. and some of these counties, and and not to mention the uh, economic benefits uh, derived from uh, from uh, heritage tourism that uh, is a big big industry in other places that have promoted their. Uh, history and their uh, architecture, uh, their historic preservation efforts. Uh, El Paso, as we know, uh, Mr. Polk has uh, unfortunately neglected a lot mm-hmm. of our mm-hmm. a lot of our uh, historic buildings. A lot of them have been torn down. Uh, we've built parking lots instead. Uh, unfortunately, the, yeah. And I think what encapsulizes for me this whole effort is the whole uh, controversy over preserving Duranguito, mm. the mm-hmm. most historic place here in El Paso. Which I do feel the need to point out, you are wearing a t-shirt of that, as we're recording this for those who can't see it uh, on there. And also, Max, you have a Segundo Barrio t-shirt on. Both both historic districts. And, uh, and so uh, we're hopeful that uh, Preservation Texas will bring a new light to what can be done in our area in maintaining some of these buildings. Absolutely. So again, that's former State Senator Jose Rodriguez also joining me here in studio. Max Grossman, a UTEP professor, both board members of Preservation Texas, as well as on the phone with us. We do have uh, Evan Thompson, executive director. We're going to be talking more with them about all the things that are going on, these changes and the significance of them. But we got to take that first break of this hour right now. So stay tuned. Be back after this break with more on the El Paso History Radio Show on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. 
The managers and cooks from the original Griggs restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corp. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk, and we are the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook. Go there for our weekly promo announcements on the topics of the program each and every week. Also, the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, where you can also find our streams, previous editions of the show, and also the entire series of El Paso Gold DVDs from Capstone Productions, covering more than the last couple of decades of documentary film production here in town fully uploaded free for your viewing pleasure plus the more recent 20 abc7 series segments from el paso history tv uh, featuring some familiar faces and names talking about some of the interesting topics of history here in west texas and you can also of course remember to support some of our advertisers pepe's restaurant in canyon Tio is open for in-house dining 6761 donovan drive i've been mia there the last couple of weeks but i will be headed out here immediately after we do some of the airings today so you can give them a call at 915-877-21 one five two. That's again nine one five eight seven seven two one five two at sixty seven sixty one Donovan Drive, home of the Juan and only Margarita. But continuing our discussion, of course, as we are today, joining me here in studio is former State Senator Jose Rodriguez, as well as Max Grossman, uh, professor of uh, architecture, among other things, and also board members of Preservation Texas. And again, still with us on the line on the phone is Evan Thompson, executive director for Preservation Texas. So as we're talking about some of the establishments and some of the changes that are coming along. Some timelines are interesting. Uh, Max mentioned that there are a kind of a three-year funding period, at least come from the county side of things, when it comes to the establishment of this West Texas regional office for Preservation Texas. So, Evan, for you, what kind of timelines are then being looked at for uh, the setting up of this and the kind of fleshing out of this office and starting up of these specifically regional efforts? Well, our plan will be to uh, uh, to recruit the West Texas program officer who will be the first employee that we would hire, recruit that person nationally. So it will take some time to uh, promote the position and receive resumes and and other materials to be able to Mm -hmm. identify somebody who is the most qualified person to be able to not only administer the program, but to to get it up and up and running, of course, is a a skill set of its own that, um, you know, this isn't an established bureaucratic position that someone's just going to be plugged into. They've mm-hmm. got to be able to uh, help us work with different partners, work with uh, with all of us at Preservation Texas to, to, to start something start something new. And, and that's what makes the, the opportunity, I think, exciting for somebody is to be not only in a community like El Paso and in West Texas with so many interesting resources, but also able to be part of a uh, something that is new and, and dynamic and interesting. Uh, once that person is hired, that will probably be in the beginning of the third quarter of this year, mm-hmm. uh, they will uh, go out and identify the a prospective office location. And once we have that office location, uh, then we can go out and hire that second staff member who would be a, a West Texas program associate. I think it's important to mention that what we've committed to is that we will have bilingual, uh, a bilingual program officer because mm. uh, it's impossible for us to be able to communicate effectively with everybody that lives in and owns historic neighborhood, historic buildings in historic neighborhoods if they're not bilingual. Ah, okay, interesting. So that's a. Uh, important note to make right off the start of it. So kind of, like you said, later, like third quarter or so this year, and then kind of on a rolling basis as uh, things progress from there, it sounds like. That's right. That's right. And and as Max had mentioned, we have a number of ideas that we'd like to to be able to, uh, to launch once the new staff is in place. Uh, everything from developing a, an architectural guidebook to West Texas that's really mm-hmm. going to help facilitate the kind of heritage tourism that that this funding is designed to, to support, uh, to be able to develop some, some programs, particularly along the, the Mission Valley related to the preservation and, and restoration of the Adobe architecture. Um, 
you know, one of the things that I think is most important about recent development in El Paso is the major private investment that's taking place downtown. Hmm. And part of that has led to the development of new and, and refurbished hotels. You simply cannot have heritage tourism without having a place for people to stay mm, mm-hmm. in the heart of a historic neighborhood. And and so El Paso has set itself up to take advantage of its position truly as the portal to West Texas to be able to, to, to host and become the hub for heritage tourism in the area. And I think another another thing to point out as well is with those those hotels and with this increasing interest statewide in the history and architecture of El Paso. You've seen both the uh, Texas Society of Architects and the the Texas State Historical Association have both had major meetings in El Paso in the last, what, six months or so. Um, Mm -hmm. So there is an increasing interest and awareness of the significance of El Paso. And as Max pointed out, and as Jose pointed out, by connecting West Texas directly with us as a sort of wider statewide, uh, El Paso is going to be integrated into the statewide historic preservation community in a way that it hasn't been up to this point. Fascinating point to make there. We are going to take that next break right now. But again, on the phone with us there is Evan Thompson, Executive Director for Preservation Texas. Still with us here in studio right now are former State Senator Jose Rodriguez and Dr. Max Grossman, both board members of Preservation Texas as well. Talking more about those goals, those exciting actions, and a whole lot more about after this next quick break here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, M1. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. Of course, we do like to mention some of our other great partner organizations and entities and talking about different and preserving and promoting different aspects of El Paso's uh, history, natural and otherwise. Of course, the great group over at Celebration of Our Mountains doing some revamping but returning to form in some ways as well. Uh, Starting up their monthly meetings, begin again this month as we are now in April. They're going to be doing their meetings out at Artovino Desert Crossing last Thursdays of each month starting at 7 p.m. So coming up a little bit later this month. If you want to email them in the meantime best way to do so at this point is at philipgoodell43 at gmail.com that's P-H-I-L-I-P G-O-O-D-E-L-L 43 at gmail.com They of course host great events and tours both of the physical, natural, and even man-made environment around our region. So a good want to get out there and about and of course previous guests on the show as well so check them out in our archive but again joining us here in studio right now we do of course have uh, former state senator jose rodriguez as well as dr max grossman both board members for preservation texas and still on with us on the phone uh evan thompson executive director with preservation texas so we were talking a little bit before the break about some of the activities some of the things that would come out of the timelines for the establishment of this west texas regional office for preservation 
in Texas. And the focus on heritage tourism that's been brought up, and we've been mentioning a good bit so far, this has been a subject that we've explored on this program previously, but particularly with the actions that we're talking about or the work that would come out of the changes that are coming around here, particularly when it comes to architecture. Max, I want to direct this one to you. When it comes to the idea of creating these you know, guides and diagrams and kind of, again, rolling in of the you know, Trost Society's mission into that, I mean, I'm certainly sure that'll be a part of it, but you mentioned all the different pieces of architecture there. A, just from its very beginning, what kind of formats, way, presentation would such a guide take? Well, when you consider uh, how rich our architectural patrimony is, mm-hmm. this guidebook would have to be comprehensive. It would have to begin with uh, the Native American period mm-hmm. and extend through the Spanish Empire, the Republic of Mexico, and into the American period. It would cover adobe architecture right through the arrival of our railroads starting in 1881. And after that, the Victorian period, right, uh, which are styles of architecture that come from Europe as well as the American coasts mm. after 1881. And then, of course, with Trost and Trost, uh, the arrival of reinforced concrete mm-hmm. and uh, the American high rise when El Paso starts to assume the character of a modern metropolis. So from Adobe Hamlet to Old West Boomtown to major metropolis, uh, we have it all. And our architecture is so rich and so diverse and what Evan Thompson was just saying is correct. Um, a lot of this is really new. There's a dynamic movement afoot mm-hmm. in El Paso to recognize these assets. For example, the Segundo Barrio National Historic District was just established mm-hmm. on November 3rd, 2021. Mm-hmm. Uh, until that date, there was only one building on the National Register of Historic Places in the Segundo Barrio. Now there are 685. And Sacred Heart Church will be the first building in this new district to actually be restored, right? <laughs> in an El Paso Barrio. Downtown, uh, according to the recent county survey, has 191 buildings Mm. eligible for the National Register, and there's a movement underfoot to establish a downtown National Historic District as well, Mm -hmm. which would regulate no property owners at all, has to be said, but would provide tax credits that could could pay for up to 45% of the cost of renovating these properties. So look, um, what better use is there of hotel occupancy tax funds than spending money to establish an organization that will promote these assets and increase tourism. Just to put things in perspective, uh, between three and $4 million a year from hotel occupancy tax Mm -hmm. funds go to our ballpark, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we're talking about using less than one-tenth of that amount, about $300,000 over a three-year period, right? right? Not annual, over a three-year period to uh, promote our architectural assets, our cultural assets which are truly assets. They're not just cultural, they're financial. Uh, Mm -hmm. The future economy of downtown and our greater community will depend on how we treat these assets, restore them and and promote them. Because people uh, need, you know, a good reason to come to El Paso. And it's not gonna be, you know, topping off their gas tank on the way to Austin or Las Cruces. It has to be, we need to showcase what makes us unique, authentic and unusual. And we have so much, and we heard from uh, uh, Senator Rodriguez about uh, our binational community. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, he, he eloquently stated that. And, and, and Preservation Texas is poised to enter this moment and to capitalize on it and, and develop it. So that's a long way of saying that an architectural guidebook mm-hmm. would go a long way to familiarizing not just uh, foreign visitors uh, to El Paso, but also El Pasoans uh, who by and large don't know that much about what we actually have yeah. Andrew, we stopped teaching local history in our K through 12 system about 15 years ago, and we Jeez, really need yeah. to step into this void and make people aware of what we actually have here in our community. I'm not sure it was that extensive to begin with the local education that is, because I remember seventh grade was Texas history year, at least when I came through EPISD, and it will stay with me forever. The first sentence of the textbook on El Paso was, El Paso was a high desert city that gets less than 10 inches of rain a year. Like that's, that's where it starts. That was the <laughs> most significant starting fact they would label about this. So frustration that I will certainly agree with you there. But um, Evan, while I still got you for at least a minute longer here, again, Evan Thompson, Executive Director for Preservation Texas on the phone, I would like to get your perspective on then what happens when something like this is established, because we're talking about wanting to see this put forth, and I'm sure it will take a, a body of work, as Max mentioned, it would be fairly extensive to try to truly encapsulate everything here. But 
one deer, this kind of work has been done, and if there's any examples you can give of previous places where this kind of encapsulation, guidebook, et cetera, has been done, what kind of impact that has had? Can you offer any perspective on that? I, I sure can, and, and I think it's important to think about uh, something like an architectural guidebook as a Rosetta Stone to a cultural landscape. It helps to interpret and unlo- unlock what people often take for granted visually on a daily basis, not just the buildings, but the cultural landscapes, why places exist, where they do. And 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 what I have found in, in, in other places is that buildings that appear in things like an architectural guidebook suddenly are elevated in significance, where mm. people take great pride in the fact that the house that they own is in the book. And how could we tear down a building that's in this book? The other thing that is is going to be useful, and we've seen this in other places, is that we know that heritage tourists spend more time and more dollars in the places that they visit. Another hub of heritage tourism and just tourism in general in West Texas, of course, is Marfa, Alpine, Fort mm. Davis. A lot of those people mm-hmm. come through El Paso and directly head out out east to those communities. A, an architectural guidebook that covers this entire region is going to give – people that are going to other parts of West Texas a reason to stay longer in El Paso, and it's also going to help people understand where they need to go and how they can understand these really interesting and unique historic resources that are in, in the small towns, the national and state parks in West Texas that they otherwise wouldn't be able to find. Okay, so in terms of what it takes to create something like that, particularly for you know as expansive a region, a variety, and uh, diverse a region as we're talking about, not to put make you put too firm a timeline on it, but I guess what kind of order of magnitude of work, what kind of expectations would you have on what that would take, I mean, among the many other things that's going on in the establishment of that office to kind of see this come to fruition? Well, Good re- good research and good understanding of historic resources is the fundamental foundation of any good preservation advocacy. Mm-hmm. So the, the more information that the staff members on the ground and those of us at Preservation Texas have about the historic resources that are out there, they will be more effective. The process of doing this research, of course, will involve a lot of, of, of new uh new work, but also there's been a lot done. The the surveys that the city and county has invested in to, to develop National Register nominations, you know, things like the recent book that Glenn Ely put out on the, the Butterfield Overland Trail, uh, other, other information that's been out there and just sitting on shelves um, need to be pulled together. And then as you go through that, you identify gaps in places that haven't had a lot of research done. And uh, and then you start to plug in those gaps. But there's a lot of groundwork that's already been done hmm. that hmm. just needs to be put into a format that is uh, understandable, consistent, digestible, and that will be a model that we could take to other parts of the state as well. Okay, interesting way to put that there. Again, uh, that's Evan Thompson, Executive Director for Preservation Texas, and of course, joining us here in studio right now, our former state mm-hmm. Senator Jose Rodriguez and uh, Dr. Max Grossman, but again, both board members with Preservation Texas. we got to take that next quick break right now, but coming out of this, we'll talk even further with them, as well as what is going to be happening with some of these changes and the importance of it. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140. For souvenirs, gifts, and decor, Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. 
The managers and cooks from the original Griggs restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. Again, do appreciate taking the time to be able to mention some of our other great partners and talking about different aspects of local and even regional history. Uh, Rick Kern's music podcast, Talk and Rock Radio. That's talkandrockradio.com, where you can find it. Often going through many different interesting eras of El Paso's both golden age of rock and roll, the bands that came through, performance venues, performers, all those kind of things with remembrances of those that are also, importantly, still around. So TalkinRockRadio.com is where you can find that. But again, joining us here in studio right now, we do have uh, former <laughs> State Senator Jose Rodriguez, as well as Dr. Max Grossman, a professor of architecture, both board members for Preservation Texas, as well with us on the phone, at least for this last segment of this hour right now, Evan Thompson, executive director of the same. So, Evan, I want to highlight at least one more thing before we lose you for the duration of this program, and that is that the guidebook that you're talking about or we have been discussing when it comes to the architectural history of all flavors within this area, that the way that you're kind of considering putting this together hasn't really been done in this format and for this purpose previously in the state. I mean, certainly there's been talk about architecture, encapsulation of ideas, but the way that you all are proposing it and wanting to see have, it, there's, it was kind of be, sound like it would be breaking ground. Well, that, that's right. I mean, it, it would be in terms of the the intense regional focus of of a guidebook. There have been, you know, important recent publications. Uh, you know, statewide architectural mm-hmm. guidebook that that covered in two volumes. You know, the vastness of of 
of Texas. But in terms of the, the detailed, focused look at the region west of the Pecos, uh, is is going to be uh, something that's new. Uh, I think probably the best model uh, for it is a, a series of guidebooks that have been published in England, uh, the county architectural mm. guidebooks known as the Pevsner books that uh, took a lifetime of work by Nicholas Pevsner to put together. But these uh, regional guides really can um, lend themselves to then uh, being put online uh, so mm-hmm. that there would be a website uh, component to all of this. And I think, as Max had mentioned, the intellectual property of the Tro Society, one of the central features of that Tro Society website is a, a very useful and interesting interactive map. And I envisioned that we would have interactive resources focused not just on El Paso, but, but sure. throughout the region that would identify some of these uh, important landmarks that we hope to, uh, to celebrate. So certainly online parts of it and the a lot of work that would go into it, uh, I'm sure that it could reach a lifetime of work, among other things. But trying to put this out in a way that would be also useful for those wanting to come and see these sites in the more immediate term. But then also, not even just the online component, you actually want to have this physically as well, right? Well, of course, you know, as somebody gets out in the field driving around in their car, you know, walking around a neighborhood, it's often easier to refer to something that is in your hand physically, Mm -hmm. as opposed to relying on somewhat, you know, spotty cell phone coverage sometimes, or your battery's low. Uh, You certainly don't want to uh, cut your architectural tour short because you forgot your phone charger. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, this architectural field guide uh, to to West Texas is, um, the other important part of it is is in, in, in putting it together and doing the research and identifying resources is, is that we will be uncovering and, and being able to share stories about the history of the region that are often overlooked and forgotten. And that is important to us as a statewide preservation advocacy organization, because so often we lose important historic buildings because no one knew they were out there mm-hmm. or no one knew the history associated with them. Mm-hmm. And so last year we put a statewide uh, listing on our annual Most Endangered Places list of Mm -hmm. of historically segregated Mexican-American schools. Uh, There's one that survives right now in in Marathon, Texas, on the main road. Mm -hmm. How many people have driven down the highway in Marathon and known that there was a a very rare surviving uh, historically segregated Mexican school that is in need of preservation? Or that just a few blocks south of the main highway in Marathon, there's an old county jail. You know, at one time, Marathon was intended to be a county seat of a separate county. It never hmm. came to be, which is why Brewster County is, is so huge. But at one time, Marathon was going to be a county seat. And the old little county jail is still still survives. And, you know, all of these little buildings that people don't appreciate because that history has not been put forward in a way that they can – you know, access it and then take the time to go and visit uh, these places. You know, that's what we're hoping to be able to accomplish, both education and preservation through good architectural guidebook uh, that would cover West Texas. Well, that's a lot to say and a lot we've crammed into this hour. But unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to, again, on the phone with us right now, Evan Thompson, Executive Director with Preservation Texas. So thank you very much for coming on with us for while we were available to record today to talk about the many very things that y'all got going on, the many efforts and what will come out of them, hopefully before too long here today. I, I, I appreciate this very much. Absolutely here. And so again, also thanks to our guests that are going to be sticking around with us here again, for former state Senator Jose Rodriguez, as well as Max Grossman. So appreciate y'all being here with us. We'll definitely be talking more with you as we get into the second hour, as we say goodbye to Evan, but still keep talking about the subject. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso history radio show after this break in the top of the hour news. Here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom 
at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelray.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 
1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. 
The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, 
Invest in real estate. M1EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Pohl, continuing on also our conversation with our guests uh, still with us this hour about what is going on with the Tro Society Preservation Texas and the combined efforts that will be continuing on going forward from here. But starting off hour two of the program, as we usually do, with a history moment from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk talking this week about the history of survivors of the Titanic here in the region. 111 years ago this April, the new ocean liner, the Titanic, hit an iceberg and sank on its maiden voyage from England to the United States. Two of the survivors lived out their lives in El Paso. One was six years old when the Titanic sank, and his name was Meyer Moore. Meyer and his mother, Bella Moore, were Jewish, and they were reportedly fleeing Russia. Their voyage on the Titanic was their second attempt to reach America by ship. Meyer and his mother were jolted out of their bunks when the big ship hit an iceberg that tore a gash along the side of the Titanic. They were able to get into a crowded lifeboat when a woman decided to get off the lifeboat to be with her husband. The woman who made space for them was Mrs. John Jacob Astor, who went down with the great unsinkable Titanic. Meyer and Bella were among 700 survivors who got off the ship. Another 1,507 passengers and crew died. The Moors were rescued after seven hours in their lifeboat by the ocean liner Carpathia and were taken to New York City. They went to Canada for two years and then on to Chicago. They then immigrated to El Paso. Meyer Moore had a pair of collector's items which might have been the only canceled Titanic tickets in existence, plus a manifest identification tag. Into the 1960s, his family operated the Five Points Outlet Shoe Store Bella Moore died in 1958, and Meyer Moore died April 15, 1975, 63 years to the day after the sinking of the Titanic. Our thanks to the Facebook page, Remember El Paso Win, for the research on this Titanic survivor story. I'm Jackson Polk with this history moment for the El Paso History Radio Show. And, of course, a lot of great credit to be given to the group and the great work done by Barbara Giffen Bainey, operator of the great Facebook group Remember in El Paso Win. You can go there for stories like this and also archive pictures galore. Nearly 34,000 members as of last check. Please remember that the administrators do work hard for researching for the history and the photos with our history attached. So if you're going to use it or going to be uh, posting it elsewhere, please give credit to the site. Again, Remember in El Paso Win. And a lot of credit to be given, again, to Chief Admin Owner and Historian Barbara Given Bainey, affectionately known as BGB, along with admins Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret D. Smith, and Jen Gerber, along with moderators Ben Vincent and Dan Graves. They're always looking for a few more good hands and eyeballs in order to keep such a large group on task and on track. It's no mean feat to do so, particularly in this day and age. So if you want to either join or become a part of the moderation or administration staff, reach out to them. Remember in El Paso when the Facebook group, Remember in El Paso when. But again, still joining us here in studio for hour two of our program today, we do have a former state senator, Jose Rodriguez, and Dr. Max Grossman, both board members of Preservation Texas. Uh, Executive Director uh, Evan Thompson uh, had to not be with us for the second part of the recording today. But so when it comes to the many efforts that we are talking about, uh, former senator, I want to direct this to you because... The span of the district that used to represent and is now going to be encapsulated in this 
third regional office for Preservation Texas, this West Texas region that uh, people can see over on the website. I don't think I mentioned this enough. PreservationTexas.org is where people can see this. And if they go to the uh, Preservation uh, Texas org and look for the West Texas the regional offices so the West Texas office will be the first will be the third actual physical office to be established and basically yeah kind of all the way to we often think of a lot of our area being like too big bend and not much beyond but this goes all the way past the bend in big bend to where the uh, dip starts to go back down in Texas along the southern border just kind of drawing out the map and then kind of a diagonal line all the way down to what is that uh, Terrell County Terrell County. Mm -hmm. And then so uh, there's a lot of space, a lot of open space, but also a lot of interesting and, and unique history throughout all of this. So in your traverses across, again, your, your former district, I'm sure you've encountered a lot of different areas and a lot of different interests out there. Absolutely. Uh, it's it's full of history. You uh, Most people, of course, are familiar with Marfa and the attraction of Marfa is sure. one of the, you know, high arts sort of place. But, uh, but you've got... Uh, as we were talking during the break, uh, some famous hotels out there in that mm, region. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a speaking of Henry Trost, uh, the Paisano Hotel there right. in, in in Marfa. That is the, in my estimation, the the central focus of the community, along with a with a historic courthouse mm, there mm. in Marfa. Uh, you have a historic cemetery there in Marfa, and and of course. To, to bring it up more to the more popular culture, uh, the film Giant uh, was filmed uh, there outside of Marfa, and uh, the Elizabeth Taylor and James Dean and the other actors, they all stayed there at the Paisano Hotel. Mm -hmm. And there's, if you visit, you'll see a lot of memorabilia, pictures of them on the set and so forth uh, during the time that they did the filming. Um, then uh, you've got uh, the... Uh, the El Capitan Hotel, another hotel, sure. the Stros mm -hmm. Hotel in uh, in Van Horn, mm -hmm. uh, kind of similar to the Paisano. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, down in Brewster County, Marathon, you and Alpine, that's where both right. Marathon and Alpine uh, are located, uh, you have the Gage Hotel that J.P. Bryant uh, owns and has preserved uh and in between, as we heard Evan point out, there's some different kinds of uh, historic right. buildings. Uh, he mentioned a Mexican segregated school. Uh, there's uh, there's locations where famous uh, 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 gunfights took place. I mm, mean, mm -hmm. this is the far. This is West Texas, right? Old Presidio oh, County absolutely. has a lot more history than just simply Marfa. Presidio itself has a lot of history right, right across from the river from the uh, city of Ojinaga, Chihuahua, which, which of course, was the site of a famous uh, Pancho Villa battle during the Mexican Revolution. Oh, sure. Uh, and, and so everywhere you go, if you come going, uh, I guess, uh, going west from there uh, or northwest, uh, you go to Fort Stockton and mm -hmm. the history that Fort Stockton has in terms of the cattle industry and and Fort Davis, you know, uh, is is right there. Oh, sure. With mm -hmm. with the uh, the famous fort, along with the Buffalo Soldiers being ah, of course. being mm -hmm. there uh, uh, throughout the wars with the Native uh, Apaches and others, mm -hmm. you know, to protect the families that were uh, uh, trying to establish themselves in that region. I mean, there's a, just a lot of history. Uh, in West Texas, that uh, that uh, we intend to help educate people about, help de help develop. Uh, we're been promising support for the West Texas Regional Office of Preservation Texas uh, by some of the folks out there in those areas, and right. uh, we intend to take advantage of that. Absolutely. So, I mean, we of course mentioned in the first hour the uh, three hundred thousand dollars over three years from the hotel occupancy tax and funds uh, from the county. But one of the names you brought up there, and Max, I want to direct this one to you, is that uh, JP Bryan is also a supporter and uh, organizations that he's helping put together in order to make sure this still happens. Right. That's right. And uh, JP Bryan has uh, had a direct interest in the West Texas region since right. the nineteen seventies. 
This is a guy who established a museum recently in Galveston a few years ago mm. that showcases the largest collection of Texas artifacts in the world, his private collection. Oh, okay. uh, he put it in, in an 1894 orphanage that he restored. He restored dozens of buildings across the state. Uh, but in West Texas, he owns two ranches uh, in Big Bend mm -mm. and uh, has restored over 30,000 acres of grassland. Marathon, of course, is his gem, mm. right? In 1978, he spent $30,000 buying an old dilapidated Trost Hotel, the Gage Hotel, which was in ruins. And today, uh, it generates $10 million a year in annual revenue, employs mm -hmm. 105 people. Uh, he went ahead and restored another 26 buildings in Marathon and mm. established businesses in them. Uh, basically saved a dying town and turned it into a regional economic engine. So this is a guy who understands perfectly that historical assets can be turned into economic assets and generate tourism, uh, regenerate neighborhoods, regenerate communities, rural or urban. And so J.P. Bryan has pledged uh, $150,000 in mm -hmm. addition to the county's $300,000. That brings us to 450 total, which was our goal. And that is enough to fund our organization for three years mm -hmm. uh, with our uh, regional director and uh, a second employee and a lease uh, somewhere in El Paso, probably in the area of downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we couldn't be more excited to have a man like JP on board with all of his expertise and all of his vision. He's most known, of course, in El Paso for helping to finance, well, primarily financing uh, my litigation uh, to save uh, Duranguito from demolition. Mm -hmm. But I want to make clear that the man has much broader and deeper interests. Uh, he understands that Duranguito is the birthplace of El Paso and worked hard to save it as a Texan, as someone who's interested in, in the history of our state. But uh, he has interests all over the state. He's restored buildings in Galveston and Houston and small communities all over the place. But he has always had a particular thing about our region, mm -hmm. about West Texas and especially uh, the architect Henry C. Trost. Uh, I mean, imagine that he turned a $30,000 building right, into yeah. a regional economic powerhouse. And imagine that one third of Trost and Trost buildings are in El Paso, about 200 mm. of them. Mm. In El Paso, in recent years, we've casually demolished very prestigious and important Trost buildings and left empty lots. I'm talking about the, um, the Union Bank and Trust building on mm. East mm. San Antonio Avenue. And of course, the John T. Muir building at the southeast corner of San Jose yeah. Plaza. That's the one I think that sticks out to me the most because wasn't as involved in this kind of work at that point in time, but always been aware of it. But what really sticks with me was the conversations that happened before city council at that point in time about the Muir building specifically. For those unfamiliar with what we're talking about, if you were standing in San Jacinto Plaza looking south and kind of specifically to the, what would be, that would be southeast, uh, there is now that empty lot that, ironically enough, the... Uh, historic advertisements that were revealed by the demolition of that building have now been restored in their own right and seen value and seeing those still around here. But the building that did stand there was described as eh, unused. It was described as, well, it wasn't actually complete because I think there were originally plans for it to be uh, multiple more stories than it was. And it was capped at what it was during the actual construction phase. And uh, even in the demolition process, it was revealed that, oh, wait, there was more actually still remaining there than was thought because there was like a facade that had been applied to it uh, since its construction. So all those kind of swirling things about, oh, hey, who knew kind of phrase <laughs> sticks with me around from it. And so that's at least part of kind of the purpose, again, because besides Preservation Texas opening this uh, regional office, uh, for those just joining us, we're also talking about the fact that the uh, Trost Society will be rolling in its resources into Preservation Texas in order to effectively not have that kind of thing hopefully happen in the future, right? Well, we, we definitely want to change the mindset yeah, sure. uh, that, that resulted in buildings like those being demolished. Uh, I think we, we need to be, be honest with ourselves about having had our city government, in this case, uh, uh, neglect mm -hmm. uh, to enforce, for example, its own codes regarding some of these buildings that uh, became di dilapidated as a result sure. mm. and uh, and and crumbled and and you know people point to buildings in Duranguito oh well those are old buildings who who cares about those buildings mm -hmm. there's nothing there uh, people just simply not appreciating the history and the importance of 
heritage tourism to a community like El Paso that has such a rich, a rich uh, treasure of, uh, of of old historic buildings mm. and sites. And so, uh, part of what I think we can do with the West Texas office is to provide some expertise through our director, whoever's going to be running at the regional mm. uh, person, as well as the assistant, is to be a resource for for the business sector who wants to look into tapping into the uh, tax credits. If we can get the historic district for downtown, as Max pointed out, where we mm. have a 90, 191 potential historic the designated buildings, uh, then people can take advantage of the 45% tax credits right. for remodeling and renovating some of these buildings and bringing them back to life. And that can be pretty attractive for visitors from all over the world. Uh, one time I happened to be in Duranguito while we had all this controversy going on. Sure. Uh, and there was this one lone a uh, person walking in the one of the little streets there. I think it was Chihuahua Street. Uh, okay. And uh, we asked him where he was from. And he said he was from one of the Scandinavian countries. Mm, okay. One of the Scandinavian countries. I think he said either Norway or Denmark. And he said he had heard of Duranguito because of the controversy. And so he wanted to visit the place. Okay. And he liked what he saw, right? And thereby confirmed what the National Historic Trust people have told us, that visitors enjoy the authenticity, the mm. real place, not a plaque, not a little memorial, you know, uh, that says here stood mm -hmm. such and such building. They want to see the real article, the genuine article. And we have that. We have that. We have mm -hmm. so many uh, buildings like that, not just in Duranguito, but in other parts of our our community. No, oh, absolutely. That, that mm -hmm. we need to be smart about saving and helping develop the image of an El Paso that is attractive to people from all over the world, like this visitor from Scandinavia. And that's kind of a good case in point. And actually, let's go ahead and take that next break right now so we can talk more about this again. Uh, that's former State Senator Jose Rodriguez also joining us here in studio as uh, Dr. Max Grossman, a professor of architecture at UTEP, both board members specifically for Preservation Texas, talking about the actions they are taking, some of the movement that's happening there, and the actions that will be coming out of it. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show after this brief break on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. 
Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archive pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out of town. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. We want to tell you about what we got coming up for you next week on the program. Next week, we're going to be visiting with the Daughters of the Republic of Texas, talking about many of their preservation efforts in their own right, and also some of the recognitions that they're doing in similar types of fashions here in and around town, plus new organizations or efforts that they are looking to start here. So tune in next week for that as we again and speak with uh, members of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas and particularly the regional chapters there. But again, joining us here in studio right now, we do have former State Senator Jose Rodriguez and Dr. Max Grossman, both board members with Preservation Texas. We have a short segment right now, but I want to put a finer point on one of the topics that we've been bringing up a couple of times, but specifically last segment, that of adaptive reuse, kind of this overarching phrase for the idea of having buildings, historic content, what have you, but then allowing it to still be used in a way because it's both uh, being able to be refinished, be able to redone, and still has the community aspect of it. So kind of bridging that gap between either having ruins or everything bulldozed and only new. So that kind of aspect when it comes to both the information about it, the efforts for Preservation Texas, and things like the tax credits that you were mentioning, I mean, there's a lot of interest in people to, okay, even if they, someone doesn't get, I don't get wandering around and just saying, well, cool buildings, people still want to like go to a place, at least in, in my experience, where there's like a sense of place. They don't want this kind of sanitized experience. That there is, that's what I end up searching out when I go and try to visit a place. Yeah, that's right. And uh, look, historic districts are very much part of this process, right? There mm -hmm. are two types of historic districts in El Paso, in Texas, actually. Local historic districts which come with regulations. Sure. Anything you want to change there is subject to review by the Historic Landmark Commission of the city, changing windows and so on and so forth. Mm. That's, a, that's, a, that's one kind of district. But the type that we are promoting is a national historic district, which comes with zero regulations for property owners who do not wish to use the tax credits. If you want the tax credits, you submit yourself to regulation. If you don't want to use the tax credits, you can still paint your house purple, demolish it, do whatever you want, it's your property, but you won't want to because the tax credits add value to your property mm -hmm. and a lot of potential. And the way it works is if you restore a building in a national historic district, up to 45% of the total cost will be covered by federal and state tax credits. 20% from the federal government drawn against your income tax sure. over time until you recover that 20%. And 25% from the state of Texas 
drawn against the business franchise tax. And that tax is actually saleable on a state tax credit mm -hmm. market. So for Sacred Heart Church, for example, which is within a national historic district right. that we just created, uh, we can't use the 20% federal because it's not an income yeah, producing sure. property, it's a church. The business franchise 25% state tax credit, we're gonna sell mm -hmm. to a syndicator. And we expect after overhead to get about $650,000 in cash towards restoring the building. It's a $3 million project. So that is a significant benefit to us. And the beauty about these tax credits, federal and state, is that they don't cost local taxpayers anything. They're not drawn from local budgets at mm -hmm. all. They're not local incentives. They're state and federal. And it's simply uh, you know, non-payment of certain federal and state taxes in order to recover part of the costs of locally restoring a building, which then, of course, generates more property tax for the community, mm -hmm. as well as sales tax receipts for the community. It's a win-win for anybody in El Paso. There's absolutely no reason to oppose this, which is why a large one was just created in the Segundo Barrio, adding 685 tax credit eligible buildings to that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And now downtown is being considered. And there's been some opposition to that, uh, yeah. a lot mm -hmm. of misinformation, but I think the good news is this is going to get done. In fact, the county on Monday uh, at the next meeting of the commissioner's court will be reaffirming to the state of Texas its support for getting that district done. Okay. And so essentially when we're talking about particularly the, the tax credits and the uh, the non-saleable part of it that you mentioned uh, is effectively the way it's been described to me and makes the most sense to me anyway is about uh, changing the calculation because uh, when you start getting into dealing with whole high rises, uh, the capable buildings, just kind of as a case in point, there has been uh, reuse that has been mentioned there, either whether it be uh, you know law offices, uh, legal safe storage, those kind of things, and those have stalled and been off and on. Those are just some of the recent projects I've heard of. Essentially, when you start dealing with buildings of that size, scope, and what you're wanting to put into it, a lot of calculations end up coming down to like cost per square foot. What does it cost to maintain, to build out, to deal with these kind of places? And so there are certain calculations of what does it take to do that with a blank slate building up a new building, as opposed to, say, revamping an existing one. And in certain circumstances, certain scenarios, it could be decided that it's actually more expensive because of having to deal with, say, outdated infrastructure, those kind of things, that it would be more expensive to uh, refit a building than it would be to demolish it and start again. That has been some of the calculations we've seen in place in this community and many other places previously. So essentially, the purpose of those tax credits is to change that calculation and make it so that, no, it doesn't make sense, as much as it doesn't make sense to me kind of at a base level to what you say you're going to demolish something and build it up again and that's going to be simpler and cheaper but again sometimes that's the way the numbers work out so it's this is about changing those numbers to make it so that it does make more sense to keep something that has been a part of the community around and still allow for it to again adaptively reuse is kind of the core there it's about econo economic calculus absolutely uh using these tax credits is a pragmatic financially smart thing to do uh, there are currently 25 buildings in downtown that are on the National Register of Historic Places individually mm -hmm. and have been on that register since the 80s. And so Paul Foster right now is restoring the Crest Building, right. mm -hmm. which was recently added to the National Register. He'll get the state and federal tax credits as well as other tax credits uh, beyond that, not to mention 380 agreement with the city, 381 right. agreement with the county. Uh, Those uh, public-private partnerships. Probably end up paying less than half the total cost of restoring the building, much less than half, just like Stuart Myers, uh, whose group restored the uh, uh, Paso del Norte Hotel. Right. hundred-plus million dollar project, but they ended up paying, I'm sure, less than half of that because of the generous tax incentive package that was put together. You know, in addition to the uh, federal and state tax credits, the city, a lot of people should know, uh, gives you 15 years of property tax forgiveness mm. on the city portion of your tax if you restore buildings uh, in the historic core of El Paso. So there are all kinds of other incentives that, that can be brought into the mix to get this done. And the idea is to put these buildings back into productive use, right. get them back on the property tax rolls, to get sales receipts out of them, to generate in a kind of a chain reaction, more business investment in the area. Uh, this is what we need to do in El Paso, and we have the bones. We have the historic building stock to get that done.
Absolutely. So again, that's Dr. Max Grossman, uh, professor of architecture as well, joining us here in studio, former state Senator Jose Rodriguez, both board members for Preservation Texas. Definitely have to take that next break right now. So come out of this break talking more about that and specifically how the rolling in of some of these efforts of local organizations into Preservation Texas will be a part of all this. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. 
Mission. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, I have to thank some of our other supporters, including promoting different aspects of growth ongoing and modern El Paso history, specifically El Paso Inc. You can go there to see our promo announcements in a slightly longer form each and every week and what we got coming up for you on that weekend's edition. So, El Paso's business journal, El Paso Inc., is available for home or business delivery to receive El Paso Inc. Order it online at El Paso Inc. Dot com or even get your digital subscription. But again, joining us here in studio right now, uh, of course, uh, former state Senator Jose Rodriguez and Dr. Max Grossman, both board members of Preservation Texas. So one of the reasons that we're talking about these aspects that we are and, of course, the establishment of this West Texas office is what is going on with an organization, again, that you are very much associated with, at very least in my mind, Max, when it comes to the Trost Society. So talk a little bit about, if you can, the decision to see these resources folded in because that is what will be happening. Uh, the Trost Society will be dissolved, but the mission continue on through Preservation Texas effectively, right? That's right. The Trost Society has been around for 10 years. It's a 501c3 nonprofit focused on historic preservation locally and on promoting the legacy of Henry C. Trost and other major architects like Mabel Welch. Sure. We've held tours, uh, put on a lot of programming, uh, held seminars on tax credits and so on. And we've voted to dissolve uh, because we believe that um, – by letting Preservation Texas subsume us, we'll actually be expanding our mission. So we're turning over all of our intellectual assets to uh, Preservation Texas, including our 10,000 plus follower Facebook page. Mm -hmm. They'll take over everything that we have, everything that we've built and developed, our interactive maps, uh, our tours, everything. And they'll establish uh, a physical presence uh, in our downtown uh, and they'll have two, two full-time employees, uh, including a regional coordinator. And they're going to be able to do everything that we've been doing for the last 10 years and much, much more mm. because of the considerable resources of uh, Preservation Texas, which is a state-level group, mm. millions of dollars in assets, uh, a board that includes uh, experts from across the state of Texas, historic preservation officers, preservation architects. Um, and El Paso will be able to tap in to all of that expertise, all of that power uh, to promote historic preservation locally. Uh, and so for me, I'm one of the founders of the Tro Society. Mm -hmm. This is a dream come true. Uh, our board voted unanimously to dissolve and allow Preservation Texas to take over our mission. So, of course, what we're talking about with that, some of the intellectual property, among other things, and interactive maps, et cetera, going towards the ads guidebook that work towards a guidebook i'm sure it'll take a good bit of time in order to get that fully in place for the entire region but particularly when it comes to that overlay that consideration of it a whole lot of debate that has been going on and it still continues to a large extent even if some of the legal challenges legal situations are evolving i'm just going to put it that way and mm -hmm. but still an area that is uh, again very near and dear physically to your heart there uh senator rodriguez as you are literally wearing it on your shirt at this moment the mm -hmm. Doranguito area when it comes to an overlay like this of the historic recognition or just kind of saying that hey this is what this place is when it comes to whatever happens next with that site there are still some debate slash actions going on but when it comes to this kind of action being taken to recognize parts of it or that kind of work really what kind of things do you hope come out of this or do you expect could be further done with this information well, well i i think uh, there are different ideas that people have sure. both the city the county some of us that are historic preservationists and others, uh, the business community, different ideas about what can take place there in, in the Duranguito footprint. Uh, you've, got, you've got 12 historic buildings there. And if you look beyond the, that area, the, you even have more historic buildings, sure. about 17 max, I think. Uh, and, and so th there's ideas that, that different people have about doing an old town there, for example. Sure. Uh, we, we all are familiar with the old town in Albuquerque, mm -hmm. uh, there in the square. We are familiar with the old town in Tucson. Mm -hmm. I, I've been to an old town, western type of place in Sacramento, uh, in part of a legislative trip that I took out, okay. uh, out there when I was a state senator. And so you got La Villita in San Antonio, uh, right there on the Riverwalk. 
Mm-hmm. That that's kind of like an old town kind of place that's very attractive to tourists. Um, so imagine imagine in Duranguito having some of those buildings be a museum, mm. be an art gallery, be a nice restaurant, bar, place, um, bookstore. Uh, you, you can have all kinds of businesses established there in an attractive setting, along with, some of us insist, some affordable housing for the residents, because we can't forget sure. that Duranguito was a residential area as well, mm. and that a lot of those people, most of those people were evicted uh, as a result of the city uh, buying those buildings right. and, and, and wanting to build an arena there. And so some of us feel very strongly that whatever we do there, we not only preserve the buildings, we, as you've been using the term, readapt their right. use in, in a way that uh, will, will be attractive uh, for people from out of El Paso, but also to, to build community. Mm. Uh, you know, the original plan there, the city actually, people don't appreciate this, the city attracted hundreds of thousands of dollars from housing and urban development from HUD to do some beautification of the area. They built some park benches, some street lighting, mm-hmm. and, and so forth, and then totally forgot about that investment and said, we're going to tear everything down and we're going to start over again, right, and mm-hmm. build in building a, a sports arena. Um, many of us envision developing an area that's historic, the original birthplace of El Paso, it's both historic, preserves the buildings, it's attractive, building, uh, buildings readapted to modern use, mm-hmm. uh, and, and to have residential uh, components to it so that some of those residents can come back and, and live where they grew up and live most of their lives. So that's what, that's what a lot of people think about, uh, some of us think about with regard to Duranguito. Now, there's other ideas that other people have, and that's fine. Oh, sure. I, I think that in the discussion, maybe we can build some consensus and arrive at what is best for El Paso, best for the, for the preservation of the area, the history, the buildings, developing heritage tourism in that, in that area. And, and I think the added plus that we have, as I mentioned at the outset, is that as a binational, bicultural community mm-hmm. with what is right next door, with the abundant history that Juarez has, sure, uh, this could be a very attractive, you know, binational uh, place for people from throughout the world to come and visit and learn about our communities, our sister cities, not just El Paso, but even Juarez. At least that's the way I look at it. Yeah, certainly. Uh, I mean, with all those direct connections, I mean, you can go straight on to some of the bridges, of course, from some of the vistas and views that we're talking about in downtown and around El Paso. But we've been talking a lot about downtown specifically, and that's not at all out of place for this. But I do want to say that particularly with some of these organizations and reorganizations coming along with it, the focus on areas outside of the, you know, a central business district and even places that are recognized in their own right, but maybe not as focused on as they arguably should be, particularly with the Mission Trail area and the way that this kind of, uh, I mean, you're mentioning, Max, the uh, Adobe building uh, surveys and views of that. I mean, I can't imagine the amount of times that I've driven by, say, you know, down on you know Socorro Road, uh, you know, or headed around the mission. It's been like, oh, I wonder what that uh, oddly positioned, at least in modern terms, Adobe building is, as it almost like juts out almost into the road. And the fact of the matter is, is that that's the kind of thing that a survey would be doing to also then help preserve not even just, of course, the missions themselves. I think that's decently recognized at this point in time. If anyone were to even start up a bulldozer in the direction of one of those buildings, there'd be a whole lot of uproar. But there's a whole lot surrounding it that isn't necessarily as recognized that could be further focused on by this as well, right? No, you're right. And, uh, you know, it's no laughing matter, but I wouldn't put it past certain people to demolish his light for a parking lot. Let's just hope that never happens. I <laughs> think that would have a lot more issues than would be <laughs> worth it. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm sure someone out there would be willing to try if they got the chance. You, you do have to have uh, people, vigilant citizens who are committed mm. to our history and culture to always be on guard and always be engaged mm. to make sure these resources are preserved forever, right? Uh, and you're right, Andrew. Uh, our missions are a unique and invaluable yeah 
resource. We have buildings going back to the 1700s uh, on our side of the river. I'm talking mm. about the Presidio Chapel sure. at uh, San Elizario, 1789. And of course, Isleta and Socorro Mission Churches have their origins in the 1680s, mm-hmm. going back to the moment following the Great Pueblo Revolt. Uh, and then, of course, just across the border in Juarez, we have the oldest standing building in our entire region, mm-hmm. which is Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe, the mission of Juarez, which was built in 1662. Mm-hmm. Now, how many communities can boast about a building that was built in 1662? Yeah, particularly within the United <laughs> States. I mean, there's one of those things about being older than the country it sits in. Those kind of statements come to mind. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, the, the, you know, I mean, just looking at Duranguita, for example, I mean, that was an Apache encampment from 1781 mm-hmm. uh, while we were still fighting the Revolutionary War all the way until 1825. And then, of course, the very first Mexican settlement on our side of the border, Ponce de Leon, mm-hmm. uh, crosses the river. And then, of course, uh, everything that develops after it. Uh, rightly called the birthplace of El Paso. The Mission Trail uh, is, you know, tells the story of Spanish colonialization, the Spanish Empire, which is um, a sad story in many respects, an interesting story, a story that we can tell through our surviving buildings. Yeah, that's an interesting way to put it here because, yeah, there's definitely been a lot of history, good, bad, and otherwise, that existed in our area. And always preserving it and learning from it is, well, better than the alternative in my mind here. Tell you what, we've got to take that uh, last break right now. Again, that's uh, Dr. Max Grossman, a professor of architecture, and also along with uh, former state senator Jose Rodriguez, both board members of Preservation Texas. We'll be back to a little bit closer to closing out the show right after this next break on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page. Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 
20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home. Thank you all so very much for having joined us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I've been your host, Andrew J. Polk. And again, joining us here in studio with me, have of course, been former State Senator Jose Rodriguez and uh, Dr. Max Grossman, Professor of Architecture, both board members of Preservation Texas. Again, inciting factor of us talking about this is the changes that are underway when it comes to the dissolving of the Tro Society being rolled into the Preservation Texas, Preservation Texas. Texas, working to now establish a presence and a permanent office in this region, the third so that they have in the state. So those a lot of things going on here. But of course, it doesn't end there just with this action because we have further work that is expected. So for y'all's time, y'all's money, y'all's considerations, uh, when it comes to kind of what comes next and what you're excited about when it comes to these changes, starting with you, uh, Senator Rodriguez, I guess when it comes to how you think about these type of actions and what could come out of them, what's most important to you? I, I suppose it, it's uh, having people in El Paso appreciate mm -hmm. the history, both architectural and the history of the region and the heritage that we have, the uniqueness of the place mm -hmm. uh, in the border, uh, the largest border metroplex in the world, as right. I understand it, uh, the, the, the history of not only El Paso, but Northern Chihuahua, Juarez, our sister city, and and then the the smaller communities in the far west Texas region sure. that we've talked about, like Marathon and Marfa and Alpine and Fort Davis, uh, Van Horn, uh, so much history that any other place in the United States would be jealous of because because of of, uh, of the various phases the the how old the area is we were talking earlier mm -hmm. about our missions and, sure. when, and when they developed and and how we can go back to the 1600s here uh nothing nothing like it anywhere else actually and so i i appreciate the opportunity that preservation texas is offering us in our region to help develop understanding of uh of our uh historical heritage of our architecture mm. uh, of our need to preserve this 
for our children and future generations uh, of the ability to use this history and the and the antiquity of the of the of the buildings mm-hmm. to attract heritage tourism and develop the economy, which uh, all the experts tell us, national and state and local, uh, is more far-reaching than other other options that have been bandied about here in El Paso. So uh, I am very uh, hopeful that this will be a new chapter in El Paso's uh, development of its uh, of its downtown. Mm. Uh, that it's not not if the future is not just all tall buildings and glass, but the future is to readapt some of this heritage that we have through our old buildings and convert those buildings into usable, usable, uh, profitable businesses that will benefit all of us uh, in El Paso and our region and the state. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot there and a lot we've talked about here today. So, uh, Dr. Grossman, for for your part here, particularly as being one of the founders of the Tro Society and seeing this action come up, I guess, what are you most excited about, interested to see to come out of all these transitions we've been discussing, at least in part here today? Well, I'm very excited that Preservation Texas is establishing a physical presence in El Paso as a regional field office, which, as we discussed, will take over all of the functions of the Tro Society and do a lot more. I'm excited to see Preservation Texas take part in the revitalization of downtown, as well as the promotion of our cultural assets, not only in our downtown, but across nine West Texas Mm. counties. I'm especially excited as an El Pasoan, uh, I've been in El Paso for 14 years, this is my home, to see the people of our community, especially young people, develop a new appreciation and love for our architectural assets for our built environment. This is something that's sorely lacking here. Uh, in other Texas cities, you, you get a sense immediately when you go visit them of a sense of local pride in what they have. Mm, mm. And uh, political policies parallel that pride. And historic preservation is big business in San Antonio, in, in no, Austin, sure. in Galveston. Uh, we need to catch up with them. That's what we're doing here. And Preservation Texas will take a leading role in that process. I'm excited to see El Pasoans get excited about our assets. And that's really, for me, uh, the overarching goal, to see that develop. I mean, the people knowing about what's here and appreciating it, however they may come to it, is certainly important because it's important to note, I think, even as we're closing out the program, that even in some of those places where this is sacrosanct, there were even possibilities at certain points in time that parts of the Alamo could have been demolished because it wasn't valid, it wasn't thought about, which sounds like just pure Texas heresy at this point in time to think about you're going to do what with what, but it was a part of it before people will truly think about it and understanding it the way that they do specifically now. So that's a case in point of why talking about it and knowing about it is important, but I want to thank again our guests here, former State Senator Jose Rodriguez and Dr. Max Grossman for being with us here today to talk about many of these subjects and what will come out of them hopefully here today. So thank you both very much. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much, Andrew. Appreciate it, and thank you all very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show. I've been your host, Andrew J. Polk. We'll be going again next week here Saturday, 10 to noon, on News Radio 690 KTSM. Have a great weekend, y'all.